couldn't swim. He tells me. I couldn't swim. And there was a hole in the dinghy. So we all tried to plug it to keep ourselves afloat, but if we all stood together, the boat would capsize and that wouldn't be good. Because I couldn't swim. He tells me. Tongue all fuzz and uh, weighted. I can't choke up a shameful syllable. He sees me tight throat and nervous, who compensates by oversharing. He says, Man, it was so dark. I didn't know it was sky. And what was water? Who knew the Aegean spanned that much farther? I paid a stranger unthinkable money to barter my life in the patched up boat and hacked your promise to take me someplace safer than home was. His story was fit for Hollywood glory, but no Oscar culmination. Our hero finds himself in Cumbernauld, washing cars by hand for four pounds an hour in Glasgow, December. With 12 hour days, there's never quite time for his skin to recover from the iced, soapy water, evoking memory of frosted ocean, mockery made of all he has given, chapped and red, rigid, raw, I would hug sunshine into his veins if I could muster strength to reach beyond these strings of puppets' privilege. Instead, I watch helpless as he tucks his hands under his arms and rocks himself lullaby. We sit a moment in silence for want of anything else to say. He heaps another sugar into the third tea he has brought me in ten minutes. There is so much sweetness in this room. I am as acrid as a lemon. He tells me he's stayed in shelters like this for the past eight years. A clock that's two years longer in the city than me makes him two years more Glaswegian than me, who changes flats like underwear, living out the luxury of itchy-footed wanderlust. I just can't get enough of freedom. Meanwhile, the egos in this building jostle for space, flung together over cards and cartoons and paper plates, playground rivalries acted out by overgrown lost boys struggling to hold dignity in the city that would rather bandy terms of illegality than greeting. Their knee-jerk tension is palpable. They are walking on eggshells disguised as impossible documents, breathing in roomfuls of trauma to start each day with a fresh dose of collective nightmare tragedy. This is no setup for healing. When I make to leave, he stops me to offer the last cigarette in his pack. They're Iraqi, he says, you'll never taste better. And if you move quick, you could still catch the Kurdish falafel round the corner. I swear to you, we have a lot to offer. Thank you.